my name is Robin Farrell. I'm Associate Curator of Modern and Contemporary Art here at the Art Institute of Chicago. And today I'll be taking you through our galleries and showing you five highlights or hidden gems from the collection. Here we are in the Roger L. Weston Gallery in Arts of Asia with the Japanese art collection. On view here is a work actually from our textiles department which is called a hito, a summer kimono. It's an unlined garment that features a traditional Japanese motif of irises and water lilies. And as you can see, the undulating pattern here in this garment gives a, gives a sense of the reflection of water. I chose this work because I actually really love these galleries. They're very contemplative and have many beautiful objects, but I like here how there's both an example from textiles, but also a, a garment from Japan that was produced around the turn of the century. Here we are in the architecture and design galleries and behind me a series of work by Chicago-based artist Amanda Williams. Titled Colored Theory from 2016, the series is, began with the artist painting houses and photographing them and looking at color at a large scale. It also draws attention to the underinvestment in African American communities in Chicago, and this specifically takes place in the neighborhood of Inglewood. Now, the color palette that the artist chose, I believe she referred to it as culturally coded monochromatic colors, and these were drawn from a palette of colors that are typically uh, marketed towards black consumer products. And so, here's a couple of examples: uh, pink oil moisturizer and flaming red hot. And in looking at color and its relationship to architecture, Williams is prompting questions, of course, about race, value, and place, and is specifically asking what color is poverty and what color is gentrification. Here we are in the Ivan Albright Gallery in the Arts of the Americas, visiting one of my favorite paintings by Gertrude Abercrombie. Titled The Past and Present from 1945, this oil on masonite shows one of the leading figures of uh, mid-century art in Chicago from the neighborhood of Hyde Park, in which she was part of a group of Midwestern surrealists who, of course, borrowed the tenets of European surrealism looking at unconscious and conscious states, but bringing in their own personal approaches to the movement. In Abercrombie's case, she brought in a lot of personal notes into her painting. This is one interior that we have in the collection that I think really captures her style of sort of a dark but very um, illusionary uh, interior space. Here we are in the Mary and Michael Jaharis galleries for Greek art, and I am standing in front of one of my favorite objects that Many of you may have passed by on your way to the cafeteria or other spaces in, in our museum. And I'm talking about this drinking cup here. It's a vessel in the shape of a donkey head, complete with very detailed eyes, nose, um, even teeth, and a naked satyr that's around its neck. And what, one thing I want to point out is the fact, when looking at this cup, that there was really no way for someone to put it down. So it's always something I like to revisit, not only because of its age dating back to 470, 480 BC, and also as part of the time and association with the wine god Dionysus, but also just to think about how it might have been used. Here we are in the Lindy and Edward Bergman Gallery in the Modern Art Galleries. We're looking at a work by Joseph Cornell, who is an American visual artist and experimental filmmaker, known for assemblage and really elevating the idea of a box construction to a formal media for art. One of the most intricately constructed mirror boxes in Cornell's body of work, this particular work actually suggests an ambiguity of space, but also referencing art architecture as well as a birdcage. Upon closer look, one can actually see that there is a bird hiding behind this uh, vertical piece of wood here. And because of the formal elements that are both rectilinear, but also some of, are balanced by some of the circular objects, such as the ring you see here, a spring, and of course there are additional uh, circular items behind the, behind the frame here. Mm -hmm. 